Hey, we could do a uh, <coughs> old-timey radio introduction for the podcast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Here, I'll lay down the static noises. <laughs> <laughs> you, and you put cup your hands over your mouth. All right, yeah, talk like this. <laughs> okay, ready? Here comes the static. Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Week in the Other. <laughs> that was pretty good. Yeah. I think we could probably use that. Maybe a little heavy on the static, but... See what usually happens is like you leave in the part where it's you saying we could probably use it. <laughs> <laughs> I do that, don't I? I was playing, uh, you know, that Pokemon Go thing. That Pokemon Go thing? No, Josh, I've not heard of this. What is it? Uh, anyways, everybody else will know what it is. I'm not... Josh, I was making a joke, because it's a huge worldwide (laughs) phenomenon, and there's no way I could have not heard of it. Uh, (laughs) Ha ha! So, anyhow... Yeah. We went past a stop that was, like, out in the middle of nowhere. And it said it was, like, the birthplace or the school home or whatever of Bill Nye. And I thought... I thought it was Bill Nye, like, Bill Nye the science guy, you know? Yeah. It's some other dude from the 1800s named Bill Nye. What? Apparently. <laughs> Yeah. What other dude? I don't know. Well, did you look it up? I Yeah, I looked it up now because I was going to like... I've been thinking like, wow, Bill Nye is from the town that I moved to. <laughs> That's totally not even the right person. How terribly misleading. They knew exactly what they were doing, too. They didn't, they didn't put enough information on that sign. They're like, oh, people are going to think this is the science guy's hometown. <laughs> So who's Bill Nye, the not science guy? Let's see. He was born in Maine, educated in River Falls, which is where I live now. Uh huh. He studied law. He was a lawyer. Ooh. He began early to contribute humorous sketches to the newspapers using the pen name of Bill Nye. Whoa. His real his real name was Edgar Wilson Nye. Oh, <laughs> that's not that's not nearly as catchy. <laughs> Edgar Wilson Nye, the science guy. Edgar. Edgar. Jeez. <laughs> oh, no, he wouldn't be the science guy. He'd be the lawyer guy. The lawyer guy. Or the humor sketch guy. What's his name? I've already forgot. Edgar what? Edgar See how Wilson. not catchy it is? <laughs> what is his name? Edgar Wilson Nye. Edgar Wilson Nye. Okay. That's great. Okay, so he did that. What else did he do? Uh, that's basically it. He died of meningitis. Oh, that's something. That's In something he's known for. Dying of meningitis. <laughs> ah, what a guy. He died of meningitis. <laughs> we'll never forget that. So wait, what is he famous for? Writing for a paper? Yeah, his uh, humorous sketches. I'm going to have to see some of these humorous sketches. Can you find any? Got to look that up, because I want to see if they're actually humorous. <laughs> well, you got to understand, though. That no, it's, no, I don't. No, I don't. 1800s <laughs> humor. Josh, I love 1800s <laughs> humor, all right? <laughs> Oh, that's true. You pretty much are 1800s humor. Yeah. 
I'm the physical embodiment of 1800s humor. Well, that's, that was quite the discovery, Josh. Yeah. Uh. Mm. Not quite the discovery that I thought it was, but... Uh. Yeah. I guess uh, we learned something new. Yeah, look at that. Pokemon. Oh, there's the crows. <laughs> <laughs> Just viciously awaiting your death. Yeah. Uh, Pokemon Go. It taught us about history. Wow. It took you to a place you probably would never have gone. It... it it informed you about a person who you never even knew existed. And now I'm probably going to read this whole stupid book. <laughs> <laughs> because of your stupid phone game. There you go. Ah, jeepers. So what do you actually do in Pokemon Go, Josh? I have no idea. You just, like, walk around, look for Pokemon? Yeah. Well, it's like, uh, <clears throat> it's like Google Maps, kind of. I actually found out that the guy that made it worked on Google Maps originally. Oh. It was one, like one of the original people that worked with Google Maps. Yeah. So it's like a mapped out of your actual like location and stuff. And then basically you just walk around and there's Pokemon randomly generated in various spots for a certain amount of time. Hmm. And then when they pop up on your radar, you can click on them. And then you try to catch them. That's basically random whether you catch them or not. It, uh, so what do you do with them when you catch them? Though? Well, you can... Like, raise them, or if you catch enough of them, you can evolve them into a higher form. Oh, okay. And you can, like, uh, certain landmarks and stuff are gyms, and you... There's three teams. You, you can try and take the gym for your team, or, like, help the gym get stronger if it belongs to your team already. Ah, I see. And then other landmarks are called stops, where you get, like... That's how you resupply. Is it random where they show up, or is does somebody like pro has somebody programmed the entire map of the world with Pokemon? <laughs> I feel like it. It's random where they show up, but they show up more in like higher populated areas. Oh, okay. And so there's also like I don't know if it's true or not, but uh, well, it's true to an extent. I don't know how true it is. But, like, certain ones only show up in certain areas. <clears throat> yeah. Like, I went to, like, the next town over. And there's, like, a park by the river. Yeah. And there was, like, so there'll be, like, the water type ones by the river and stuff. Oh, cool. How about, like, a junkyard? Are there any junkyard <laughs> Pokemon? Like Oscar the Grouch? <laughs> Hey, you want to train me? <laughs> <laughs> there is one that's basically like nuts and bolts. So he would hang around the junkyard then, yeah? yeah I suppose. You ever, you ever go to a junkyard and look for Pokemon? No. Mm. I think you're missing out on that. Gosh, I've never played any Pokemon game ever in my entire life. Yeah, see, neither had I. Like, my extent, pretty much, of the knowledge of Pokemon was from Smash Brothers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, pretty much the same here. That's about all I well, know. I thought the concept of that sounded cool, and a lot of my friends were getting into it and stuff, so I was like, yeah, I'll try it out, whatever. Mm hmm so that kind of got me into it and then <coughs> went now back. you're hopelessly addicted <laughs> yeah. digging through junkyards <laughs> started watching the TV series on Netflix and stuff like that oh god Josh you're one of them now <laughs> <laughs> you're one of them 
am. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's that's fine. It's funny. I, um, <clears throat> one of my friends was here staying with us for the uh, reception, <laughs> and uh, me and him had to go to the store like 10 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. And we both had it on as we were walking through the store, and then we go to check out the the uh, cashier was an older lady, like I don't know, not like super old, fifties something maybe. Like Chuck Norris old? <laughs> no, not quite. Okay. More like Jet Li old. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is how we're officially measuring age from now on. <laughs> She's like. You guys catching them Pokemans? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Why do they pronounce it like that? Old people. They, all of them do that. So, when I was a kid, Josh, I got a PC game out of a box of Captain Crunch. <laughs> okay. And it was... <laughs> This was, I guess it was the early 2000s. I think one of their little mascots was like a fuzzy ball of energy or something. You remember that? Something like that? He was like oh, this crazy, yeah. like, fuzzy ball guy with a mouth uh -huh. and eyes. Anyway, the game it was. was like, super insane. Yeah, yeah. Always, like, getting kids into dangerous situations. Yeah, just, like, <laughs> in the middle of traffic and, like, yeah. jumping around. Yeah, you know. <clears throat> so. The game was you had to like raise this crazy creature and like you would feed it and play with it to like get its strength up or whatever and uh and then you would do little challenges like a, I think one of them was just like a platforming kind of game I forget what the other games were but man that was great those were the good old days those were my early PC gaming days probably the closest I've ever come to playing a Pokemon game <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm gonna. I gotta look this up now because this is gonna bug me. Crunch <laughs> berry. No, are you sure that it wasn't the honeycomb guy? No, um, maybe it was. I might have gotten both of them actually. Because I feel like the the fuzzy thing was from honeycomb. This looks right. Yeah, I think you're right about the fuzzy thing. Was there a honeycomb game as well? I might have been playing that. <laughs> <laughs> you ever get games out of cereal boxes back in the day, Josh? Oh, yeah. What yeah. Did, do you remember any of them? Mm, not, not really, no. No, I don't think there was a honeycomb game. I must have just been thinking of the honeycomb mascot. But the actual game was Captain Crunch. Yeah, Cap Captain Crunch Crunchling Adventure is what it was called. <laughs> oh my god. That was great. <laughs> yeah. There was a game where you were skateboarding and you were like racing a turtle, apparently. That was one of them. Oh yeah, here's the platforming one. Oh, what is this? Something where you're like standing in some sort of lava area with a dinosaur. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure it's not uh, Mario? <laughs> no, no, this is Captain Crunch. Oh yeah, and then like your your little guy would like evolve and get bigger and stronger as you fed him and trained him and stuff. <laughs> New. What else is new, man? <gasps> did I ever tell you? This was a while ago, but did I ever tell you about uh, the guy who came to fix my modem? Mm, I don't think so. Okay, I could tell you about that, I suppose. You want to hear that terrible, tragic tale? Uh, yeah. Okay, so my modem, like, it just broke. Just completely stopped working, it was broken. 
and it was very frustrating. I was like trying to, I was doing all sorts of stuff, like trying to figure out what's going on. And I was like, okay, it's definitely the modem. It's not working. So I call up Charter and I'm like, hey, you got to fix this. So anyway, they send this guy out to fix it. And uh, he brings this little tool bag in and he's, he's, you know, just chatting with me or whatever. He sets the tool bag down. And this was my first red flag <laughs> that something was weird with this guy. A giant spider crawls out of the bag and it was like it was like a a jagged like one of those ones with like jagged looking legs and it had like the big the big bulbous ass part on it. <laughs> and it was like this translucent sort of color. It just crawled out of his bag. I was like, oh god. He didn't seem to notice it though. <laughs> and so there's this giant spider crawling across my floor and uh, I he had to go back out to his van and get something. And while he did that, I scooped it up with a cup and I threw it outside. <laughs> so I was like, okay, crisis averted. Oh. Uh, but how uh, rude. That was probably his pet. No, you know what it actually made me think of? Possibly business partner. <laughs> It made me think of that scene from The Fellowship of the Ring where all the hobbits are hiding underneath that tree root. Yeah. And the, the black rider or whatever is like leaning over and all the, <laughs> the worms and stuff are like crawling out of the ground, like trying yeah. to get away from this black rider guy. <laughs> I was like, oh God, is that what's happening here? So that happened. So then he comes up and he's like starting to fix my or not fix my modem because it was totally broken so he was like installing a new one or whatever and uh he's just he's a very chatty guy and uh he asked me like what i what i like to do or whatever what i any hobbies i have and i said oh i like i read a lot and i told him i read a lot of science fiction mm -hmm. and he <laughs> he uh, he uh he starts talking about this guy I forget his name but he wrote a book I think it was called the 12th the 12th planet or something like that let me just look this up real quick ah yeah Ze Zechariah Sitchin the 12th planet he starts telling me about this book he was like yeah this is some real life science fiction here and I was like that statement makes no sense <laughs> first of all <laughs> it's real life that it's not fiction and then, okay, so I didn't know, I'd never heard of this book or whatever, but he starts talking about, like, the pyramids and the Sphinx being, like, <laughs> way older than they, than people say they are, and he was, like, he brought up, like, a pyramid in Alaska or something that was, like, that was aligned with the pyramids in Egypt, and he's talking about, like, Mesopotamia and the hieroglyphics and cuneiform, <laughs> and I was like, what are you talking about? And it was horrible because he kept he kept going on about it for literally like half an hour. He was talking about this stuff. Oh. He was a very uh, he seemed very intense and kind of creepy. He kind of gave that vibe off. <laughs> so I was like, he was saying these things. I was like, is he is he like setting up for a joke here? Oh no, he's still <laughs> still going. Like he really is believing in this sort of stuff. So I wasn't sure if I should be laughing. I was like physically holding my mouth down to not smile because I thought he would like, you know, kill me or something. <laughs> so he starts talking about like Titans at the beginning of the universe, like protecting a planet or something. And then these aliens coming to Earth and starting to breed with the people that were there and making these like half alien demigod things. And he was like, it wasn't, like, this is like a science fiction book, but he was, yeah. he thought it was like real, I guess. <laughs> oh, God. Jeez. It was really kind of frightening. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. And his name was Kevin, and he called himself Kev. So, anyway, he was talking, like, the whole time, 
that he was I don't know what he was actually doing honestly like I'm pretty sure the modem was up and running in about two minutes <laughs> and then he's like yeah yeah I'm just it's just checking some stuff so I think he just wanted to talk some more about these ridiculous <laughs> conspiracy theories uh, so anyway I was very happy when he left and very paranoid that he would come back <laughs> with, with like, like a marked your house as he left yeah true believer lives here gonna bring me some pamphlets or something I don't know <laughs> maybe some Kool-Aid <laughs> some tinfoil god it was so weird though like he was <laughs> I don't know it was like he was utterly convinced that what he was telling me was like fact it was very strange <laughs> The best, still the best part is like the, just the random huge spider. Like, yeah, how did that happen? I don't know. And it, <laughs> <laughs> it was weird, like thinking about it afterwards. Like, wow, that was like a really like ominous foreboding, like <laughs> uh, portent of doom. There, jeepers. Yeah, I get some customers that are kind of weird like that, too. Yeah. I still generally work in, like, the cold areas because other people don't like to, and I don't mind it because I'm used to it. Yeah. And this one guy asked me where, he's like, where are the whiteys at? I was like... <laughs> <laughs> well, I was I like, beg your pardon? <laughs> excuse me, the whiteys? He's like, yeah, where do you guys keep the whiteies? It's like a, you know, 50-some-year-old, short, kind of overweight white guy. <laughs> I was like, yeah. what the hell are you doing? <laughs> oh, my and God. I'm just, I'm trying <laughs> to think of what he could possibly be talking about. I know, I so can't. was I. I was, like, racking my brain, like, what? What? I don't even know. He's looking for the frozen White Castle burgers. <laughs> oh, of course. Of course, yeah. Of course. Whiteys? Uh, Who calls them that? I don't know. Hmm. Nobody ever that I've ever heard. Gee, that is, that's kind of weird. Where are the Whiteys at? <laughs> well... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I can guarantee if you put that into Google, White Castle would not come up as the first. I don't know, Josh. <laughs> Try it. Oh, man. Whiteys. I get that a lot, though. Like, people... They'll, like, have a, a different name for something. And a, oh, yeah. It's like, like a slang term that they think is kind of universal, but <laughs> only they use it. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, well, sometimes it's like that. Sometimes it's because they're like originally from a different country or something. Oh, yeah. Because it's near the Twin Cities, so there's a lot of different cultures and stuff and whatever. And, mm -hmm. You know, I'm totally fine with that. It's just I don't know the terms <laughs> sometimes. I don't understand the terminology you're using, sir. Would you please use something a little different? Let's look up <clears throat> slang terms for <laughs> for food. I thought you were going to specifically say White Castle. No, it's just... Uh some of the results that were popping up were pretty funny. Okay. <laughs> Apparently burger is an adjective. Burger. That movie was <laughs> so burger. Is the example. <laughs> um, uh, okay. I don't know. I'm, just, I'm looking up food slang here, Josh. What do you expect? Ooh, cowboy slang terms. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Okay. Oh, this this will be good, Josh. This will be good. Uh huh. Okay. I'm gonna give you <laughs> the cowboy slang term for a certain type of food or possibly beverage, and you have to guess what it actually is. Okay. Okay. You want to do this? Sure. Okay. I'm gonna skip ones that are just horribly dumb and don't make any sense. Okay. Here we go. Overland trout. Overland trout. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, rabbit. I don't know. It's bacon. Bacon. Yeah. Okay. How about boggy top? What? <laughs> well, Josh, don't you know any cowboy lingo? Boggy top. No. What? You're close. It's a pie with no crust. No top crust, that is. How about cackleberries? <laughs> I have no idea. Ah, well, Josh, come on. That's quite obviously eggs. Oh, okay. Sure. Alright, let's I'm gonna try to find one you might actually be able to get. <laughs> How about a huck dummy? <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, nothing like a huck dummy. That's biscuits with raisins. Okay. Uh, sure. Oh, come on. This this is an easy one, Josh. Bee sweetening. What? <laughs> Bee sweetening. Oh, honey? Yeah! Bee sweetening? Bee sweetening. Why wouldn't you just say honey? Because this is cowboy lingo. They don't talk like normal folk. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. This one's pretty good. Skunk eggs. No? Nothing? <laughs> Come on. Think about it. Skunk eggs... I don't know. It's an onion. Oh. Oh, Josh. Oh, Josh. How about six shooter skink? Or also known as float a horseshoe. Also known as arbuckles. Also known as brown gargle. <laughs> <laughs> Coffee. Yeah, there you go. What was the first one again? Six Shooter Skink. I feel like I've heard that. Hmm. That's weird. How about John Barleycorn? Or also known as Hop Juice. <laughs> Beer? Yeah! Oh my god, this one has many, many... <laughs> okay, you ready? I'm gonna list off all the, uh... All the aliases of this beverage. <clears throat> Nose paint, pop skull, prairie dew, rebel soldier, red eye, snake pizen, tarantula juice, tongue oil, tonsil paint, tornado juice, bust head, bottled courage, family disturbance, <laughs> Gut warmer, <laughs> Kansas sheep dip. <laughs> oh God! What? What? Yeah. I'm gonna guess whiskey. <laughs> it is whiskey. <laughs> oh. oh my gosh! That's great. Good job.
Well, thanks for stopping by, everybody. I'm glad to have you back. Glad to be back. And hopefully uh, be back again soon. So stay tuned.